it's chemistry. And if you, I think Roush has it with his teams, they, they seem to work well together and uh, share and they, they talk about each other. Um, but I don't think everybody that will try to do it will make it work. So uh, I see a tremendous advantage in it and I think I, I just happened to notice in the race Sunday at one time I had two cars and one car leading the other one running fifth and Roush was between them. So I mean, you know, we were, we were kind of up there together and that doesn't mean that uh, it, it's a big advantage because look at Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt. Rick Hendrick, the other owner, fielding three teams in the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit on that concept and on our guest tonight, who joins me now, Jack Roush, the owner of the Valvoline Exide and Family Channel Ford Thunderbirds. Jack, thank you for having us in tonight. Oh, we're glad to have you. you know, we uh, enjoy a chance to show our cars off, and uh, we've got a lot of our uh, customers and our employees here that are enjoy being with you as well. Now we've got this big sign behind us here that says JR's Garage established 1996. First let's get started by, by what that means. Well uh, the guys, the marketing folks, uh, Jeff Smith and his group were looking for a way to label um, uh, some of our products for production cars and Mustangs, high performance parts. Uh, we've got a lot of high-end collectibles that uh, that need to be sold, uh, made available, and uh, of course the hats and t-shirts and things. So we looked at all the things that we were ready to take to market and he says, well, uh, they decided to label it under J JR's Garage. And a uh, very neat concept and I, I saw some of the, uh, the aftermarket things you were talking about. You took us outside just a moment ago and showed us a Mustang that is pretty slick. Let's talk about uh, your operation here before we get into racing specifically. Racing is just a part of what is headquartered here. What I want to do is a little show and tell just to give a couple of examples. We've got some video that we shot here on your complex and we'll show a couple things and you tell us what, what's happening here. This is uh, this is a noise vibration hard, harshness uh, testing laboratory. They're, uh, they're quantifying the sound, the disturbance and the shaking forces to come out of an engine as it runs and in order to make a quiet a car have a, a, a more of a perceived uh, high quality standard and uh, that that element happening here on the Livonia campus that's that's within uh, two blocks of where we are yes sir. all right now here we have another uh, uh, piece of video that we took here this is an emissions laboratory where we're working with the federal government and with uh, the car manufacturers to uh, to limit the uh, tailpipe emissions to acceptable standards and optimize fuel economy. And, and again, that happens here on this campus, as it's called. Now, also based here of your racing operation, you don't have the Winston Cup cars themselves here, but a lot of your racing operation outside of Winston Cup and the engine department is based here? Yes, the super trucks are here, um, the Trans Am cars are here, um, and the engine development, the, most of the engine development for the uh, for all the programs are here. We're sharing some engine development, Joe Trison and uh, Bob Rinaldi in uh, Mooresville, but uh, most of the engine development, uh, most of the engine building, and uh, the super trucks and Trans Am cars. And that'll look at uh, the uh, Tommy Kendall driven Trans Am car and one of the two frames being put together for that machine. You have so much business outside of the racing venue. I want to ask you if racing is your golf game and a hobby, or is it another division of your business? Racing is another division of the business. Um, I started the business really around being able to generate the money to operate my race cars in the mid 60s. And uh, over a period of time, you know, we figured out that the right balance was uh, having about two thirds to three fourths of our business in traditional uh, bread and butter engineering and, and hardware uh, preparation activities and have motorsports be the rest of it. And as we've grown uh, uh, over the last 20 years or so, uh, the, um, the balance has, has pretty much stayed uh, around 25% for racing, 75% for the more traditional business. Okay, so let's get away from, uh, from, from the non-racing business and focus on 1996, your three NASCAR Winston Cup teams. Kind of grade the season for me for each one of them briefly. We're probably B minus so far. Um, you know, Mark, uh, a few years ago, won four races in a row, and we looked at all the wrecks we missed and all the timing chains that didn't break and the other things that didn't happen to us. We were pretty lucky, and we're paying back on some of that now. Uh, as close as NASCAR racing is and as, as, as tight as everybody is squeezing the grape, you know, uh, accidents happen. Uh, uh, you'll have a string of breaking parts, uh, which we've had, and I don't expect to break another part all year, but uh, it doesn't surprise me that we've, we've had a, a run uh, in my life when bad things happen uh, like that typically happen uh, three at a time. 
right, Jack Roush with us tonight from his Roush Racing headquarters in Livonia, Michigan. One of his three NASCAR Winston Cup drivers, Ted Musgrave, joins us. Later on, Jeff Burton and your phone calls on the multi-team concept. We'll be right back. I think it'll help the race teams and it'll help each driver and I think we saw that last fall at North Wilkesboro. Dale was had been struggling at North Wilkesboro. We had not run very good there in the spring and we went up there and tested with the two drivers of two teams for two days before the race and, and Dale even made the comments, you know, he'd always wondered how Ernie got through three and four at North Wilkesboro and, and he learned something and I think it come back to show when we got there on qualifying day and, and even on race day when I think the 28 was in position to win the race and until we got into lap traffic and I think that just was a, a small example of what we've already seen that these two drivers working together can, can benefit everybody. team concept as we welcome you back to JR's Garage on this week in NASCAR. Now joining Jack Roush and myself, the driver of the Family Channel, Prime Star Thunderbird, Ted Musgrave. Good to have you here. Thanks. I was going to correct you on that. Yeah, you didn't say Prime Star in the beginning of the show, well, but you did now. Thanks. See, now you only got so many lines on my typewriter. See, I'm not in that computer age yet. It's been a busy day for you, hasn't it? It's been pretty busy, but, you know, every time you come to Michigan, and, you know, it's the home of Jack Roush and it's home of Ford Motor Company, you know, they keep you hopping around here, but there's so many people that are behind you, you know, in NASCAR Winston Cup. You've got like I say, help from every every aspect of racing is, is here. So we need to come in and see everybody and thank them for all the help that they've done. Jack said B-plus on the overall organization's uh, season to date. Uh, what do you think on Ted Musgrave's season to this point? Not a B-plus. <laughs> he's, he's awful kind if he said B-plus. Maybe a, a C-minus, but we've had off and on a year. We've had some good races and some bad ones, but uh, I think what it is right now, you're just going to see how fast we can rebound. Yeah, this is a uh, look at your best finish of the season quickly there. That was the Richmond race. You are hiring by Jack when he called you a couple years ago. How long did it take you to say yes? Uh, before he called. <laughs> I talked to Mark. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, you know, I was ride shopping at that time. I knew I was going to have to do something pretty quick. And I had a lot of opportunities with other companies, and they just didn't hold a candle to what Jack could offer me and, and all the equipment and the personnel that behind me. So it was a, a definite yes on my part. I just had to uh, influence Jack there, and it worked out really well. Jack, when you, when you look back at where Ted has gone, 1995 versus 1996, the team had a, a pretty good run of momentum built up there. Um, what did you see as you ended last season that encouraged you about this year and, and how that team has progressed? Well, we had, um, had basically our entire crew in, in, uh, intact. The chemistry is really important. Uh, there was no changes anticipated in the pit crew, and our pit stops were great last year. Uh, Ted uh, you know, was becoming uh, very, very familiar with the, uh, with the cars, and he and Mark were working together uh, as good as I thought they could. Uh, their harmony and, uh, and their communication was just excellent. I want to talk about your crew chief for a minute, Ted, Howard Comstock. He's not a name that, you know, most people would, would pick out off the headlines, the names of a few crew chiefs, and Howard's been around a while, but his is not necessarily uh, a household name. Tell me something about Howard that uh, if I asked you to introduce him to everybody tonight, what, uh, how you would introduce him, what you'd tell him about him. Well, Howard does have a background that a lot of people don't know. He was in helping with the Trans Am cars, and he did a little bit of drag racing himself and working with the Chrysler Corporation, I believe it was. Wasn't it, Jack? Right, it was with yeah. Chrysler as yeah. an engineer. See, Jack knows a lot more about Howard than I do. He goes a couple years back, but uh, being known in the Winston Cup, uh, Howard came in with Wally and started in uh, the second year with Wally. So Howard's only been in Winston Cup, I believe, five years now or so. So him and I are learning together a little bit as time goes on, and you know, I think it's going to be a strong marriage there. You know, as long as we all grow together and learn together, we're going to be strong. How often do you communicate with your crew chiefs? on a daily basis, twice a day, five times a day? Um, probably twice a week between the races uh, on the phone and, uh, and I'll be, on most weeks, I'll be in North Carolina with them uh, for, uh, for a better part of a day. You spend a lot of time on uh, airplanes then, back and forth. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, you, you, you started asking me about my hobby and you didn't go on and ask, but I'm really enjoying aviation right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a great time with my flying, but, but I fly uh, out of uh, Willow Run here, uh, typically uh, 
6.30 on a uh, Tuesday morning, and I'll get back uh, 11 o'clock or so on a Wednesday evening after I've, I've made the rounds. I'll come back to that hobby because you've got a couple of toys uh, in the aviation mode that are pretty interesting. Uh, at least I've heard of them, but I want you to tell me about them. Ted, I want you to, to tell me now we're, what, 12, 13 races into the season. You've had to probably adjust your goal from what you started the year with, what you wanted to accomplish. What have you adjusted it to? Well, I guess what, what I'm going to have to do right now is I've been kind of like on a conservative type situation for the past couple of years, you know, racking up the points, finishing really good, racking up the points, finishing good. Now we've had a lot of trouble this first half of the season, so I think you've got to throw more or less caution to the wind, and you're just going to have to be bullheaded right now and just go for it for the second half. Do you feel pressure to win a race? Well, there's always pressure. You know, you want to put pressure on yourself, too, to win a race because... You know, not only just for our sponsors, Family Channel and Prime Star, you've got the guys back at the shop that are working really hard on the cars, you know, and they deserve a win just as much as anybody else in the you know, Winston Cup garages. They're working just as hard. So you know, you've got to put some pressure on yourself saying, hey, man, you, you got to repay these guys somehow. you got to get this thing going real good and get some wins. So, you know, the, the media puts pressure on you, and, uh, you know, Jack has not put pressure on you, but, you know, it sure would look a lot better on our record to get a win and also get on the uh, Winter Circle program, you know, and down the line and, and get those uh, races, being in the Winston, stuff like that that I want to do. So, you know, like I say, we got a lot of work cut out for a second half. All right, Jack Roush and Ted Musgrave here with us at Roush Racing in Livonia, Michigan. When we come back, the newest member of the Roush Racing driving stable, Jeff Burton, will join us on This Week in NASCAR. Don't go away. First, going to take a look at the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series point standings as we head to the race Saturday night at Bristol, Tennessee. The top three very close together. Well, the, the biggest advantage to a multi-car team right now that, that we see is that you have more test dates as a result. You know, we're, we've got seven test dates. Uh, we've got three wind tunnel dates, basically. So a team that has uh, three or four teams, you know, they, they're just get to, to broaden that, that number. You know, they get, they get three times or twice of what you're getting. So, yeah, they get more time to develop and to find out new things that work, especially when the tires change a little bit. David Smith as we welcome back to this week in NASCAR. We're at Roush Racing in Livonia, Michigan, and now the newest member to the Roush Racing Driving Stable joins us, Jeff Burton, driving the XI Ford. Welcome back. Your second appearance this season. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Tell me about uh, your impressions of your season to this point. A couple of high points early and uh, a couple not so high points. We're riding the roller coaster, I think. The, uh, the first year roller coaster, we're, we're riding it pretty hard. <laughs> we've, uh, we've done well. We've, we've finished in the top 10 in almost half of the races that we've entered, so I think for a new team that's that's pretty good. Um, I think the key to it, though, is to continue to look at the program. We can't be happy with just finishing 8th and ninth. We think that we've got good enough equipment and good enough, good enough people to finish better than that, but as a new team, it, we're going to have to learn and get better every week. Saw a glimpse of uh, the Richmond race there, which was your best finish of the season. You seemed to have a little momentum going, and then the week after, it kind of came to a little stop at Atlanta. I thought we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> we weren't going to talk about the rent car either, were we? <laughs> That's right. We, uh, we, we surely didn't do a good job of representing ourselves or a sponsor or Jack Roush or anybody at Atlanta. We missed the race, and, and uh, I guess Jack put it best. He said, we, we are excused mistakes because we are a first-year team, but we don't like to have to, to, to make mistakes that big. We, we're okay making some mistakes, but that was a little bit too big of a mistake. And uh, we dug ourselves a pretty good hole. Now we're trying to dig ourselves out of it. Jack, what does Jeff Burton bring to your organization when you hired him? Uh, you obviously had something in mind when you looked at his skills and his attributes. Well, he's the second funniest guy on the team uh, behind <laughs> Ted. Um, I had experience with Jeff in his Bush Grand National Program with Phil Martasi. Uh, when Jeff was in uh, equipment that was uh, equal to Mark in terms of setup uh, for a particular track, uh, the car and all, he was able to do as good a job as Mark. and. Uh, and his experience was, was less than Mark had at that time. So, so I felt that, uh, that, that uh, Jeff would just be able to do an excellent job. Uh, Mark liked Jeff. Uh, Jeff respected Mark, and, uh, and I think he liked him. And uh, I, I looked at uh, what we could do with uh, an opportunity to go with uh, the new sponsor like Exide for us, and, and I, I was sure I couldn't do better than Jeff. You paired Jeff with a very well-established crew chief, Buddy Parrott. Uh, why Buddy Parrott? Well, you know, we, I wanted to put together a more conventional kind of a program in the Charlotte area. Buddy is, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's the uh, consummate uh, 
a Charlotte crew chief, uh, well liked, respected, great at putting uh, uh, harmony together. Uh, you know, he was Rusty Wallace's crew chief when they won all those races, and and uh, and and put that program together. And I, with with what uh, my commitment was, uh, working with the guys in uh, in. Uh, uh, Liberty, the, the Valvoline team, and the Prime Star Family Channel team. I couldn't come back and and uh, and spend as much time with them as as uh, as I had for the things we've been building. And so I needed somebody that uh, that was really able to be independent, and and I just be able to help with once in a while. And Buddy Parent filled filled the the, the uh, requirement on that. Ted, you seem like you're itching to tell this rent a car story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was pretty good, you know. When Jeff and I always have a lot of fun together, and we were just heading back from an appearance, and we're going down the highway down here, and I think it's Highway 96. So there was a guy with a flat tire on the side of the road, and Jeff's driving. I'm next to him, and we thought well, we'd just pull the emergency brake handle for a minute as we went by and chirped the back wheels and scared a guy. But when we pulled it up, pulled it up pretty hard, and the phone fell down underneath the handle, and it stuck. So we were <laughs> we were sliding sideways down Highway 96 until the thing stopped in the side of the road, and the dust and the dirt's flying, and we finally got the phone out, took the brake off, and off we went. But now the car's going. Da, 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 da. <laughs> in the Mich Michigan State Police that both want to see me. He I did appreciate it. Jeff the help, guys. Phone 37963. <laughs> I have a Jack Roush credit card if you need it. <laughs> a tip from the not, announcer. Not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> a tip from the announcer. Never buy a rent-a-car from a place in a race town. Trust me, these, these guys don't ever give up and they don't ever go slow. Jeff, your interaction with these guys, you had to come in this season and fit into a couple guys that have been working together for a couple years. Uh, openly accepted from the start. Well, I think that anytime you bring a new team into an existing two-car team, there's going to be um, an adjustment period. Ted, Mark, and I immediately have, have had a lot of fun together, and I, I think we've raced well together, and I think we've helped each other. Um, I know I've pushed Ted, and Ted's pushed me, and I feel like I've got two of the best teammates that you could have because they want to beat me. He's a big guy. <laughs> they want to beat me, and I want to beat them. And, and I think that's good. I think it's great that that Ted Musgrave can take an interest in doing better than Mark Martin because he can respect somebody like Mark Martin and he knows when he beats him, he has done his day's work. And I think that, that competition is what a three-car team is all about. We can help bring each other to the next level. And when we leave, uh, we leave Richmond and I finish fourth, Ted finishes third, my team's like, man, couldn't you beat Ted? God. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's good. I really do. I think these guys have been spending way too much time together here. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering if this is the same Ted but Musgrave that laid his uh, head down on uh, Jeff Burton's shoulder that I saw after Daytona. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't his head. He was laying on my shoulder. At Daytona. Yeah. You got to remember, we're going back to Daytona. I'm trying to make up and okay. get outside. <laughs> Jeff Burton, Ted Musgrave, and Jack Roush with us on this week in NASCAR. Coming back with more after a quick look at the manufacturer's standings. We're live on Prime Network. Don't go away. You know, it's, sometimes there's an advantage with the Hendrick team where they have three, they'll get together and, and talk about it, and, uh, you know, the Roush teams and like that. It's, uh, I don't know if it's a disadvantage to us because the way Rusty gets the car handling so well that, uh, you know, it's uh, we, we do pretty good on our own. So I, I can't imagine if we had a second team right now helping us. to Roush Racing in Livonia, Michigan, JR's Garage here at Jack Roush. Ted Musgrave and Jeff Burton joining me on this week in NASCAR. And time now to kind of jump into the multi-car team concept in a little more depth. Why more than one car in the first place, Jack, when you did it a couple of years back? Well, I've been around two-car programs since I started racing in 1966, both as a, as a driver and as an operator and as a mechanic. There's, there's many pluses. You know, if you build twice as many cars and twice as many engines in the same time frame, you're going to learn more than if you build, you know, half that amount. Uh, if you build three times, potentially you've got, uh, you've got, uh, you've got another advantage again. There's a practical limit to how much money you can spend on development as it relates to engines and cars or chassis or whatever. And uh, we bumped the limit with, uh, with let's say, two cars. And so we've got an additional efficiency as we as we add a third program. Uh, NASCAR's rules, as they relate to testing, you know, begs multi-cars. You know, they're going to give you seven tests with one car. 
okay, I can own I can own more than one car. I can go to all the tests and watch if I want. The crew chiefs can't go and the drivers can't go, uh, except for one at a time. But uh, there's nothing that can stop them from talking about what's happened uh, if they're in a good relationship with one another, which my guys are. So we've got a chance to test more. We build more parts we can look at. Um, we've, got a, we've got a chance to offer, uh, I think, a better value to our sponsors. And uh, on a given day, if they don't run into one another, they can even work together on the racetrack. My horror is that uh, then one of these days uh, there's going to be this huge pileup and I won't be loading up three wrecks all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one race team fielding three cars or three race teams? Neither. I've got one race team fielding two cars and two race teams fielding three cars. Uh, Buddy is the general manager of the program that Jeff, uh, the Exide program that Jeff drives for in Mooresville. I'm the general manager of the program that uh, Mark and Ted drive for. You know, Buddy and I talk on different levels. We talk as general managers. We talk as, as owner and manager. It gets real confused. But uh, uh, we, uh, uh, as far as the drivers are concerned, I'm sure that they feel as if it's one program. They get the same engines. They all got the same budget, which is basically unlimited, uh, as long as they can justify what they think they can learn from what they can spend. And uh, you know, we, uh, we, you know, we are from the point of view of the way we administer ourselves, uh, uh, it's it's consistent. Let's talk about your interaction in a given week away from the racetrack. Are there team meetings that you guys come in and sit down on? Do you talk by telephone, or is that pretty much at the crew chief level away from the racetrack, Jeff? Uh, can you imagine all of us in one meeting? That probably wouldn't work too well. But um, I tell you what happens is when Ted goes test, we will talk. He, uh, his son works at our shop. He'll come by and we'll sit down and talk. Uh, and then I do the same. And then there's a lot of telephone conversations between the three crew chiefs. I think that's probably more important than the, than the conversations between the drivers because the crew chiefs are there every day at the shop and they can make things happen on the race car. But, you know, I think a lot is made of... of the testing and, and, and it can obviously help the engine program and the aero program but what we found is that Ted Musgrave, Jeff Burden and Mark Martin require three different setups so we can speak and we can we can communicate but a lot of the, the chassis setup knowledge does not transfer from one team to another. What about at the racetrack Ted? You, Mark, Jeff at the racetrack how often do you speak? Well, quite a bit, but then again, like Jeff touched on, there's uh, we can fine-tune the cars more or less to a particular driver. I may like a car that's a little bit different than what Jeff would like, you know, a little shock different, this and that. But overall, like he was mentioning before, there's a lot of things aero-wise in the basic design of the chassis. You know, we can talk about that during the week and during a testing, which car was better aero-wise or chassis-wise, and bring that particular car to the racetrack. But at the track, we can share some information, gear ratios, and maybe something that would have, you know, really help one car will help another. But fine-tuning, that's just going to have to be, you know, uh, the particular driver's going to do that. Back to open the phone lines in just a minute. First, a quick look at upcoming NASCAR Touring Series events this weekend, and it is a busy weekend in addition to the Winston Cup cars at Michigan. You've got the Bush Series cars down in Myrtle Beach. You've got the Goodies Dash Series, the All Pro cars, and the trucks at Bristol Motor Speedway. Lots of NASCAR racing, hopefully near you this weekend. Go on out and check some out. This week's Royal Oak Fan of the Week is Becky Harrison from Lakeland, Florida. On behalf of Royal Oak Charcoal and This Week in NASCAR, here's wishing Becky good times all summer long. Welcome back. We're at Roush Racing, JR's Garage in Livonia, in Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Just to look at one of the many classic cars here in the museum, and one that's uh, on its way to being a classic. As we rejoin you on This Week in NASCAR, Alan Bestwick here with Jack Roush, Ted Musgrave, and Jeff Burton. What's the matter? You didn't like me calling your car a classic? No, I think that that's a classic about the uh, rent -a car I believe. But you know, <laughs> don't worry, I've got the keys to it now, so everybody's safe. <laughs> All right, we're going to open up the phones and get your calls and opinions in on the multi-team concept the uh, Kubota race line. It's toll free from anywhere in the United States. 1-800-266-9531. First up, we go to Christiansburg, Virginia and Liza. Hello, you're on This Week in NASCAR. Hey, how are you all doing tonight? Just fine, thank Great. you. Go right ahead. Okay, I'd like to um, ask Jack Roush a question. Uh, how you doing tonight, Jack? Doing great. Well, good, well, good luck to all three of your teams this week. And I would like to know, how do you divide your time between your three teams to make sure that all three cars run as equally as they can? 
Well, I, I gave some information just earlier, but uh, I'm general manager of the, of the Valvoline car and the Prime Star Family Channel car, and Buddy Parrott is, is general manager of the Exide car. Uh, I didn't feel that I had enough time to do for the third car what I was doing for the first two, so Buddy, you know, Buddy is picking up and probably doing a better job with me than what I see, you know, in many different areas. Let's go back to the uh, phones in Cartago, California. Bonnie, you're on this week in NASCAR. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bonnie. You're on the air. Oh, Bonnie. Bonnie, you're not Bonnie. You're not Bonnie? No. Bonnie has to go back in. She's got to go in live. They're waiting for... I guess we lost Bonnie. She must have had to run out for a minute. <laughs> hey, this is live. We're not making this up. 1-800-266-9531 is the phone number of the Kubota race. So go ahead. You reach I, I, I could have swore she was asking, hey, wasn't that Mark Martin on there? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go back to Bonnie. Bonnie, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, you almost Red left us. And Mr. Rapp. He's listening. And go Ted, ahead. Are you holding on to your chairs? Go ahead. I'm watching you on Prime Star. All right. Hey, where's our satellite dish? Yeah. <laughs> My question is, how hard is it to get three different sponsors for three cars? And thank you for taking my call. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Sponsorship pursuit, any harder for three cars than it is just finding one for one? Well, you have to make your sponsorship commitments and your agreements one at a time. And uh, the, the program that we've got going with Valvoline, you know, we, uh, we negotiated uh, without considering uh, what else was out there in terms of sponsors, and we got uh, that program cemented with Mark. Uh, Family Channel and Ted uh, was done as independent as it could be, and, and when it came time uh, to negotiate with, uh, with Exide, uh, you know, it was as if the other three weren't there, or the other two weren't there. Back to the Kubota race line at 1-800-266-9531, East Holden, Maine. Alan is on the phone with us. Go ahead. Hi, I was calling Jack Rossi. I was wondering uh, how much of an advantage of technical data does the multi-car team have over the one-car team, and how does it affect in qualifying? Well, I don't think it has any great effect in qualifying. Uh, neither does qualifying give you much of an indication of what your prospects are going to be in the race. Qualifying is basically a test of nerve. And, and, uh, and skill of the driver. The driver goes out, punishes the car, punishes the, the tires, takes a chance on wrecking, and sees what he gets. And, uh, you know, from the very beginning with Mark, before we had, as a team, learned how to race these cars, he could carry one for one lap and put us uh, well up in the field and get poles for us. So qualifying is primarily about the driver. Uh, in terms of getting ready to race, uh, it takes a wealth of experience and takes a really good book. Uh, crew chiefs like Steve Meal and Howard and, of course, uh, Buddy Parrott and James Ince, you know, have in order to be able to make uh, the car be able to, to go a fuel stop without running off the tires or without braking. Jacksonville, Florida, watching on Sunshine Network. Greg, go ahead. You're on this week in NASCAR. Jeff, Ted, how are you guys tonight? Great. Hey, how are you? Mr. Roush, a question for you, sir. First of all, hats off to you for being involved in so many aspects of racing and keeping them at the level that you do. Uh, you do a top-notch job. Uh, my question is, is all the information that is gathered through testing and qualifying, is that shared on race day between the teams? And how is that divided between you and the individual crew chiefs? And does that make it harder on you, say, than it would for Richard Childress to manage just a one-man team where he can focus all his energy on Dale Earnhardt alone? Well, one, one team or three teams, uh, Steve Meal or Steve Meal and Howard and, uh, and Buddy, you know, all three keep me on a need to know his need to know basis. You know, I, I don't uh, know what is in their playbook uh, as far as the chassis setups and the car uh, situations uh, uh, on a minute to minute basis. If we have a problem, I ask questions, try to help them fix the problems. And I can focus on problems in three cars, I think, as well as I can, uh, as I can with one, as long as as long as the programs are reasonably well uh, running as, as ours are. 
Um, I, uh, I, I would sure not like to trade back to a situation where I had to run just one car. I'm really comfortable with, with the multiplicity of inputs and of the, uh, the relationship that we've got with uh, the crew chiefs. The crew chiefs are the secret to it. You know, they know what's, uh, both what they're doing at this time and they think they know what their next step is. And if the chemistry's right and ours is not right now, those guys are not only saying to one another or telling one another what they're doing, but they, they're telling one another what they think their next move's going to be, and that's helped us a lot. Jack Roush, Ted Musgrave, and Jeff Burton with us on This Week in NASCAR. Going to take a quick break, come back to talk about this weekend's racing up in Michigan with our three guests. Don't go away. trying to chase Bobby Labonte to the checkered flag in last year's Miller 400. He wasn't going to get him. It was going to be Bobby Labonte hanging on to score the first of what would be two wins at Michigan in the 1995 season. A Joe Gibbs Racing sweep of events at the two-mile oval last time around. Labonte in victory lane, and we welcome you back inside JR's Garage, the headquarters of Roush Racing in uh, Livonia, North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina. I keep wanting to say Liberty, North Carolina. <laughs> which is where the Winston Cup team shop are for the uh, 6 and 16 cars. We're in uh, Livonia, Michigan, just outside of Dearborn. And now I want to turn our attention to this weekend's races uh, at Michigan. Based on what happened here last year, give me a little scenario on uh, key points that we may end up talking a lot about that the folks may end up hearing and seeing a lot about during the weekend, Ted. Hearing and seeing, hopefully to get to hear and see me quite a bit, and that means we're doing good. And Last year we came up here with the new pavement, and we qualified really well. I think we qualified sixth and was running really well, and, and I think we had a mechanical failure to relegate us back a little bit, but it was an awful good car, and I believe we got one that's just comparable or even better right now. So it looks like, uh, you know, it's going to be a really, really tough race because everybody can run flat out for a long, long time here at Michigan. It's nice and wide. You've got a lot of grooves out there, especially turn one. You can go low, you can go high. So uh, it's hard to hold anybody off that's really got the car handling and working really well. So we'll, we'll duke it out, huh? Sure. Sounds good to me. How important is your starting spot in this race, Jeff, tomorrow? How important is qualifying for, for your hopes on Sunday? Well, the way I qualify, I hope it's not too important because I always have a lot of work to do. Um, I, I really don't think qualifying is that important. Um, we obviously want to put an emphasis on qualifying because the last thing you want to do is spend a lot of time on Saturday worried about getting qualified for the race rather than working on your race setup. So I think that positioning yourself and, and being able to pick the proper pits uh, is probably more important than starting 10th versus 20th. At, at a place like Michigan where it's wide, if you get your car driving well and, and it, it'll run up the straightaway, you can pass cars yeah, pretty easily. Jack, we got about a half a minute. A lot of parts breakage, a lot of motor breakage in the race here last August. Why and do we expect more of the same Sunday? You spend a lot of time uh, wide open throttle and a V8, 90 degree V8 engine has some natural uh, uh, harmonics to go through it and you spend uh, an awful lot of time at those criticals at this racetrack. So it shakes, it shakes things apart. Ted, Jeff, thanks for coming by and uh, livening up the, the building here. <laughs> Hope your rental car runs fine when you head back up to the hotel and uh, good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Coming. Right. Jack, your people have just been over backwards here for us today to uh, make sure we had a successful show. I want to thank you for having us here and thank you for uh, being a part of the show. Well, thanks for coming, seeing Alan. Uh, we, we enjoy having you and, and we enjoy helping you put on your show. You got some neat cars here. You got one I can borrow to run up the racetrack tomorrow? I promise uh -huh. I won't pull the emergency brake on it. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't do it. Okay. All right, Jack, thank you, Ted, nice thank you. you. Jeff, thank you very much. Jeff Burton, thank Ted Musgrave, and Jack Roush here, and all their employees <laughs> looking on at Roush Racing's headquarters in the Bonnie of Michigan, and we thank them for being on this week in NASCAR tonight. Now, take just a quick minute and tell you about our programs coming up the next couple of weeks. The Winston Cup troops are off next week, so we're going to be at our headquarters studio in Charlotte with a mid-season review. We're going to hear from Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, and Terry Labonte, plus the bat around some of the issues that have been the stories in the first half of the NASCAR Winston Cup season. Be right back. Welcome back. Our final 
minute on This Week in NASCAR. Tonight coming from Roush Racing's headquarters in Livonia, Michigan. Want to thank Jack and all of his staff again for their fine hospitality and hosting our show today. So, practice opens at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning out at Michigan International Speedway for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Bush Pole qualifying is at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. And ARCA Bondo Marhide Series race Saturday. And then the Miller 400 on Sunday afternoon. 1 o'clock is the green flag. An off weekend for the Winston Cup troops next weekend. Hope you'll join us Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Prime Network for our mid-season review special from our home base studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. Plus, we'll be at the gala opening of Daytona USA in two weeks on July the 4th. For now, for Jack Roush, Ted Musgrave, and Jeff Burton, and our entire This Week in NASCAR crew, I'm Alan Bestwood. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. This Week in NASCAR has been brought to you by... Chevrolet. One car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR. Genuine Chevrolet. Kubota Tractor Corporation, who invites you to enjoy a test drive at your local Kubota dealer today. Napa Auto Parts. At Napa, we keep America running. Royal Oak Charcoal. Good times in every big red bag. And by NGK Spark Plugs. Original equipment on more makes than any other spark plug in the world. NGK.